My name is Christian Puckett. This is Peacekeeper. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, episode 13 today. I'm going to do a little bit of a different style podcast. I'm currently sitting at my computer. Uh, I'm kind of building up my desk at the moment. So I bought a, just like a, well, I guess it's an Amazon desk, but I bought it on Craigslist used. Um, and then I just got my, my monitor in. It's a 27 inch LG 1440p external monitor. So I got it hooked up into my MacBook Pro. And then I have a, um, I have a mouse, I have a keyboard coming, a Keychron C1, um, and then just some cable management stuff. So I'm get I'm getting the desk, I'm getting the workstation all ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to go over more, like kind of just lighter stuff today. I, I'm going to mess around with chat GPT. I'm going to talk about some video games. I'm going to talk about some TV shows. Um, kind of just like an entertainment type of podcast. Uh, no big deal, huh? All right, cool. I think I have this screen recording going, so I'm just going to test it out here. Um, testing. Hi, are you there? Okay, so... For people that don't know what chat GPT is, it is a, it's a website. So there's this company called open AI and they have come up with this artificial intelligence, this AI chat bot type thing. So you could basically ask it any question you can think of anything in the entire world. And it's going to answer you as if it's like another human being. And it it's here. In fact, I'm just going to ask it, what is chat GPT? So it's saying chat GPT is a language model developed by OpenAI. And also it's essentially instantaneous. Like it generates these responses within seconds. Um, it is a variant of GPT, generative pre-trained transformer architecture, which is a type of neural network designed for natural language processing tasks, such as text generation, translation, and conversation. Chat GPT has been trained on a large data set of text from the internet and can generate human-like responses to questions and prompts given to it. So I've been messing around with this for the past few weeks. Uh, my little brother Josh showed it to me, but also it's just completely blowing up right now. Half the time you can't even get onto the website because it's just, I guess their servers are just way overloaded or a prompt will pop up and be like, we're working on backend stuff. Sorry, kind of bear with us. Uh, if you haven't tried it for yourself, I highly recommend you do. There's been instances where... I'll have like an entire video on, in Premiere Pro and then I'll just auto transcribe it and it'll bring up everything I said in the entire video. It will lay it all out in text form and then I'll just copy it, paste it into chat GPT and say, hey, can you give me a description for this video for YouTube and make it under 100 characters? Boom, it'll, it'll do it immediately. And then I could say, hey, can you do that 10 more times? Like, watch this. Can you give me 10 YouTube titles under 50 characters for a video where I talk about chat, GPT, video games, TV shows, and switching from Adobe products to DaVinci. I cannot really see my keyboard clearly because I got this mic in front of my face. All right, let's see what it says. 
Sure, here are 10 potential video titles. 1. ChatGPT, the magic brain behind your questions. 2. Gaming and TV with ChatGPT. 3. Switching to DaVinci, my experience. 4. Maximizing creativity with DaVinci. 5. Say goodbye to Adobe, hello DaVinci. 6. The ChatGPT guide to pop culture. 7. From gaming to TV, ChatGPT's recommendations. 8. Streamlining your creative process with DaVinci. 9. The chat G- the chat GPT approved guide to entertainment. 10. Da Vinci, a game changer for creatives. It did that immediately. Like it's I, I want to know how are you so good at coming up with stuff so fast? Thank you for your compliment. As a language model developed by OpenAI, I've been trained on a large data set of text from the internet. This allows me to generate text and respond to questions based on patterns in the data I've been trained on. I don't have emotions or personal experiences like a human, but I can generate text that is similar to what a human might say in response to a given prompt or question. Yeah, so... You could definitely utilize this as a serious tool. I mean, I could get podcast tips, recommendations. I can transcribe. I could get title. I can get YouTube titles. I could get YouTube descriptions. Um, it can't like it's only text based, so uh, it can't like generate any sort of images, or you can't have it watch a video for you. Like everything has to be completely over text can you give me advice for my podcast sure here are some general tips for starting a podcast number one define your audience knowing your target audience will help guide the content and the tone of your podcast oh my god it's just like it comes up with so many i can't even read it this fast choose a niche Pick a specific topic or theme that you're passionate about and that sets your podcast apart from others. Plan your content. Decide the format, length, frequency of your podcast episodes and create a content calendar to keep yourself organized. It literally gave me 10 tips. Consistency is key. Stay focused. Network. Have fun. Engage with your audience. Promote your podcast. Like, this is some valuable information. And don't even get me started on, like, the coding and the uh like development aspects of it because i i'm not familiar with that whole world but it can literally like code you an entire website or it could code you a video game can you give me life advice sure Here are some general pieces of life advice. Number one, prioritize your well-being. Take care of your physical, mental, and emotional health. And don't be afraid to seek help when you need it. That's a great piece of advice. Number two, set goals. Determine what you want to achieve in life and create a plan to make it happen. Another good tip. Three, cultivate relationships. Four, practice gratitude. Five, be proactive. Six, learn from your failures. Seven, embrace change eight give back nine be kind i mean i'm just like briefly summarizing them but they have like whole sentences that go along with them where do you get your information i was trained on a diverse range of texts from the internet including websites books and other sources this training data was used to teach me patterns in language and help me generate text that is similar to what a human might say My training data has a cutoff of 2021, so while I have a vast amount of information at my disposal, it may not be up to date with the most recent developments or events. Additionally, because my training data comes from the internet, it may contain inaccuracies or biases that are present in the sources it was trained on. All right, at least it's honest with itself. How lucrative can a podcast be the potential for profitability from a podcast can vary greatly depending on a number of factors such as the size of the audience the type of content it offers and the monetization strategies used by the creator some popular podcasts are able to generate significant revenue through advertising sponsorships sponsors 
sponsorships and partnerships, while other others may run as a hobby or a way to promote a business or brand. The level of success or profitability a podcast can achieve depends on many factors, such as the size. Okay, it's kind of you're kind of repeating yourself there. Quality and efforts made by the creator. It is also worth noting that creating a successful and profitable podcast takes time, effort, and dedication. Many successful podcasts had to put in a significant amount of work over a period of time to build their audience and monetize their content. While there is no guarantee of success, creating high quality content and promoting it effectively can help increase the chances of building a profitable podcast. This is all really good stuff, right? I mean, I'm kind of in this period of laying the foundation, putting in the time, putting in the hours, and not really seeing a payoff as of yet. I mean, I'm seeing slight and gradual growth, but I feel like a lot of times whenever I stumble across a new podcast, it's like episode 759, episode 1004 it's like oh wow y'all have been doing this for a long freaking time uh and then you you kind of just hop on like you don't really see all the work like you didn't watch episodes one through 100 you saw 101 and then you decided to stick around but it was a lot of work to get those 100 episodes down i was watching a mr beast clip on youtube i think it was like how to whatever make it on youtube or something and he's like, honestly, don't even talk to me until you've done 100 videos. Um, he, I mean, it wasn't like in a <laughs> negative way, but he was just like, people people have to put the work in. Um, you have to be able to set up a process to be able to make a lot of videos. And don't start asking questions like, how do I make a successful channel or how do I... Um, get more views or get more watch time or get more subscribers. He's just like, dude, you have to be able to like create stuff first. So create a hundred videos and then you can start asking those questions. Okay. Let's see what else chat GPT knows. What are your shortcomings? As a language model, I have a few limitations that are worth noting. Limited context. I do not have long-term memory or context about past conversations, so each response I provide is based solely on the information contained in the current prompt. Two, lack of experience. Although I have been trained on a diverse range of texts, I do not have personal experiences or emotions, so I cannot provide first-hand perspectives on many topics. Three, bias in training data. The training data I was trained on is sourced from the internet and reflects the biases and inaccuracies that are present in the sources it was trained on. Limited creativity, number four. I can generate text based on patterns in data I was trained on, but I have limited creative ability to and cannot guarantee truly novel ideas. Interesting. And then lastly, number five. Compliance with laws and regulations. I must comply with all relevant laws and regulations, including those related to hate speech, harassment, and privacy. This means that I may not be able to provide information or generate text that is harmful or illegal. Despite these limitations, I am designed to provide helpful and informative responses to a wide range of questions and to assist users to find the information they need. Dude, this is the future right here, right? I mean, I feel like in 10, 20 years, this is going to be another kind of revolutionary technological advancement. Uh, a couple weeks ago, my, my Nana came over and she asked me what video games were. And that was the first time I had had to explain what a video game is to somebody. And I feel like I kind of flopped my answer, but I'm going to try to ask chat GPT and we'll see what it says. They say he, she, I don't know. I wonder what chat GPT's pronouns are. Okay. What are video games? Video games are interactive digital games that are played on a computer or gaming console. 
Players control characters or objects in a virtual environment and complete tasks or challenges, such as solving puzzles, fighting enemies, or racing against others. Video games can be played alone or with others, either in person or online. They can be designed for different platforms, such as consoles, personal computers, mobile phones. There's a wide range of video game genres, including action, adventure, simulation, strategy, and more. So there is a video game for almost every type of player and interest. Playing video games can be fun, can be a fun and entertaining way to spend free time and can provide a sense of accomplishment when players complete a difficult level or achieve a high score. Additionally, some video games can provide problem-solving skills and hand-eye coordination. Thank you, but can you explain it to me as if I'm explaining it to my two-year-old? Sure, video games are like make-believe on your TV or computer. You get to pretend to be different. Okay, this is way too advanced for my two-year-old. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, it is, but uh, you get to pretend to be different characters like a superhero or a race car driver and play games with them. You can use buttons or a mouse to help your character move and do fun things like collecting treasures or defeating bad guys. Video games are a fun way to use your imagination and play pretend with characters on your screen. That's pretty good. I mean, that's simplified, I guess, to the best of its ability. Okay, what else shall I ask it? What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is a philosophical question that has been debated by scholars, religious leaders, and individuals throughout history. There is no single answer to this question, as different people have different beliefs and interpretations about what gives life meaning. For some people, the meaning of life may come from their relationships with others, their pursuit of personal goals and achievements, or their connection to a higher power or spiritual belief system. For others, it may come from serving others, making a positive impact on the world, or finding inner peace and contentment. Ultimately, the meaning of life is a deeply personal and subjective question, and each individual must determine their own purpose and meaning through their own experiences and beliefs. Some people find meaning in their work, family, or hobbies, while others may seek it through self-reflection, spiritual practices, or helping others. The search for a meaning, the search for meaning is a journey that is unique to each person, and it is up to each individual to decide what gives their life purpose and fulfillment. Are you the future? As an AI language model created by OpenAI, I am a product of current technology and I'm not considered to be the future. However, AI and language models like myself are seen as potential tools for shaping the future, as they have the potential to transform many aspects of society, from education and healthcare to finances and transportation. AI and language models are still in their early stages of development, and it is difficult to predict exactly how they will be used in the future. However, it is likely that they will continue to evolve and become more advanced, potentially leading to new breakthroughs and advancements in various fields. It is important to note that the development and deployment of AI should be guided by ethical considerations and a commitment to ensuring that AI benefits society as a whole. This will help ensure that AI is used to improve people's lives and create a better future for all. Yeah, so what's interesting is that I could literally just pretend that that was me talking, right? I could create a video where I'm just reading off this prompt. I'm just reading what chat GPT feeds me and then just pretend it's mine, right? I mean, I could just put b-roll over it and then that was like a really that was a quick inspirational two-minute clip on youtube like okay i want to try that i could just say write me a story about a 27 year old named christian who wants to travel the world Christian was a 27-year-old man with a passion for adventure and a burning desire to see the world. 
He had spent his entire life in his hometown. <laughs> oh no, this is going to be way too accurate. <laughs> I've never moved out of Albuquerque. He had spent his entire life in his hometown, but he felt like there was so much more out there to explore. One day, after saving up for several years, Christian finally made the bold decision to quit his job and set out on a journey to travel the world. He packed a small backpack with the essentials and brought and bought a one-way ticket to his first destination, Thailand. Over the next few months, Christian visited numerous countries, each one more beautiful and unique than the last. He trekked through lush jungles, climbed towering mountains, and swam in crystal clear waters. He met new people from all walks of life, trying new foods and learning about different cultures. Christian's journey was not always easy, but the challenges he faced only made his experiences all the more meaningful. He realized that the world was not just a collection of sights and sounds, but a rich tapestry of diverse people, each with their own unique stories. By the time Christian returned home, he had changed in ways that he could have never imagined. He was more confident, more self-assured, and more appreciative of the world around him. He had lived life to the fullest and would never forget the adventures and experiences he had on his journey. From that day on, Christian continued to travel whenever he could, always seeking new adventures and experiences. He knew that the world was a big place, and he was determined to see as much of it as possible. Boom. It created that in five seconds. My, my entire life story. There it is. Projected on open AI. <laughs> that sounds great. I would love to go to Thailand. I'll just say, but he has two kids and a wife and a mortgage. <laughs> Christian still had the same passion for adventure, but now he was also a husband and a father of two young children. He and his wife had a mortgage to pay, and the responsibilities of parenthood weighed heavily on their shoulders. <laughs> Despite these challenges, Christian was determined to find a way to fulfill his dream of traveling the world. He and his wife sat down and had long conversation discussing all the options available to them. Eventually, they came up with a plan. They would rent out their house, use the money to pay off their mortgage, and embark on a year-long journey with their children. They would homeschool the kids on the road and use the experience as a way to bond as a family and create memories that would last a lifetime. The journey was not without its challenges, but Christian and his family forged ahead, determined to make the most of every moment. They visited countless countries, each one filled with new sights, sounds, and experiences. The kids thrived on the road, learning about the world and themselves in ways they never could have in a classroom. When the year was up, Christian and his family returned home, their spirits lifted and their hearts filled with memories that would last a lifetime. They were grateful for the experiences they had shared and they knew that they would always be a tight-knit family because of the journey they had taken together. Christian and his wife never regretted their decision to travel the world with their children and they often looked back on their journey with fond memories. They knew that they had made the right choice, and they felt grateful every day for the opportunities they had been given. Okay, how do I actually make that happen? Making your travel dream a reality will require careful planning and preparation. Here are some steps to follow. Determine your budget. This will help you determine how long you can travel and what destinations are feasible. Number two, research travel options. Number three, plan your itinerary. Number four, rent out your house. That's the hard one. So consider using a trusted property management company to rent out your house while you are away or explore short-term rental options such as Airbnb. Number five, get your finances in order. Number six, look into homeschooling. Number seven, plan for healthcare. Number eight, pack. Make packing. Make a packing list and make sure you have everything you need for your journey, including a comfortable backpack, camera, and any other items you need for your travels. Remember, traveling the world with your family is a big commitment and it will take time and effort and preparation to make it a reality. But with a solid plan and the right preparation, your dream of traveling the world with your family can become a reality. Whew. 
All right. I know exactly what to do. I swear, every time I get on this website, I'm just like, how does it do this? This is crazy. What are some good podcast segments I can implement? Here are some popular podcast segments that you can implement in your show to keep listeners engaged. Number one, interviews. Interview experts, influencers, or interesting people in your niche to provide unique perspectives and insights. Number two, news and current events. Number three, Q&A. Number four, reviews. Number five, roundtable dis- discussions. Number six, solo episodes. I got that on point. Number seven, storytelling. Number eight, how-to segments. Number nine, guest hosts. Invite other podcasts or industry experts to co-host an episode or take over the show for a week. Number 10, listener feedback. Read listener feedback, reviews, and comments and respond to them on the show. Okay, I'll do that. I uh, posted a clip on YouTube, a little short, and I got a handful of funny comments that actually made me kind of chuckle. Uh, it was a it was a, sh- a YouTube short where Emily and I were talking about how many kids do we want, and it was kind of just discussing whether we want two or three kids and i really i actually laughed out loud at this one this dude said have three or more one might turn out to be a dud i have four kids two are duds one is a semi dud and the other one is everything you would want in the kid if i had to do it over i'd try to have six to eight kids partner willing (laughs) i just love the duds part and then this other guy was like, "How are, uh, bro, you look like a child. No need to make life decisions when your body hair is still patchy. And then this guy said, totally get it. I always said three, but found out real quickly that we can only afford to have one. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people have that one and then they're like, all right, one and done. All right, I just did a segment. What was the segment? It was uh, listener feedback. Yeah, so if you ever comment on my video, that's going to be a... A segment going forward. Okay. You are on my podcast. That's great. I'd be happy to participate in your podcast. Please let me know what you'd like to talk about and I'll do my best to assist you. All right. So this is something genuine that I'm feeling that I, I'm trying to work out in my head right now. Uh, and it's something I've been feeling for a while now, but and I'm being sincere here, but I have this kind of burden that's been weighing on me where I feel so strongly about the dire state of the health of my immediate community and the health of just, I guess, this country as a whole. I mean, the quote unquote standard American diet, SAD. Uh, I just think is slowly killing everybody and no, not everybody, but everybody that's eating the standard American diet, like we're all being poisoned to death. And so this is something that I've been like trying to work on and write out exactly how I feel and how to like explain that to other people without coming across like, judgmental or looking down or like shaming people. But I want to ask chat GPT. What is a good way to communicate? I'm worried for the health of people in America because of our poor diet and life styles. I want to try to explain a better way of eating and proper nutrition without sounding judgmental. All right, let's just see what it says. When discussing the issue of poor diets and lifestyles in America, it's important to approach the topic with empathy and compassion rather than judgment. Here are some tips for effectively communicating your message. Focus on the facts. 
Share statistics and research on the impact of poor diets and lifestyles on health and how it contributes to chronic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Number two, highlight the benefits of healthy eating and lifestyle habits. Discuss the positive impact that proper nutrition and regular exercise can have on overall health and well-being. Number three, use personal stories. Share your own experiences with healthy eating and lifestyle habits or those of others to illustrate the positive effects and make your message relatable. Number four, offer practical solutions. Provide tips and resources for making healthier choices such as simple recipes, meal plans, or workout routines. Number five, avoid using negative language. Instead of criticizing unhealthy habits, use positive language to encourage people to make changes. For example, instead of saying, stop eating junk food, say, try incorporating more fruits and vegetables into your diet. Number six, show empathy and understanding. Acknowledge the challenges people may face when trying to make healthier choices, such as limited time, budget constraints, and access to healthy food. Offer support and encouragement. By approaching the topic with a positive, non-judgmental attitude, you can help raise awareness about the importance of healthy eating and lifestyles and inspire others to make positive changes. That's really good. I just need to work on my communication skills is what I'm learning. Because uh, that, all, that all makes sense. I just need to be an effective communicator. How... Do I become a better communicator? Oops. Improving your communication skills can help you build stronger relationships, be more effective in your personal and professional life, and achieve your goals. Here are some tips to help you become a better communicator. See, and that's the funny thing is that I could just start this video right here and say, I'm going to give you tips on how to become a better communicator. Number one, practice active listening. Number two, be clear and concise. Number three, like it's just crazy that just the question, the ethical question of plagiarism whenever it comes to chat GPT is something we're probably going to have to figure out. I mean, we're currently trying to figure it out, right? I mean, because this thing is passing tests at universities is what I've heard. It's um, like you could just get it to write an essay for you. Uh, yeah, so practice active listening, be clear and concise, be aware of nonverbal communication, adapt to your audience, use empathy, practice, practice, practice. And again, it goes on for all of these, but by working on these skills, you can become a more effective and confident communicator and build stronger relationships with those around you. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up for chat GPT. Um, thank you, chat GPT. You are very helpful. Man, what an incredible tool. I I can only imagine how long it's going to take to monetize this. Uh, it's totally free at the moment, but probably not for long. All right, I'm going to talk about video games for a few minutes. So I've been playing. So I brought my Xbox. I have an Xbox Series S. I brought it into the office, into my workstation. Uh, and so I've been playing the Witcher three, uh, the Witcher three, it came out in 2015 and I kind of slept on it. So they just released a current gen upgrade for it. So it kind of, it runs really nice. It runs at 60 frames and it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. I'm getting really big runescape vibes from it. I was a big runescape nerd growing up uh i wonder how many hours i put into runescape just on like the family computer uh yeah i loved room honestly that was probably one of my first that was probably one of my first online video games that i ever played uh but i mean it's it's very different from the from the witcher but um yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's not like totally sucking me in. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is cool. Uh, honestly, I'm really just waiting for Hogwarts Legacy to come out. Uh, that comes out in like like next week. Yeah, actually next week from today. Uh, 
that game actually looks really good. Um, just from watching the trailers and the pre-release stuff that they have coming out, the amount of detail in this game. I mean, and to be honest, I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I'm not like, I never read the books. I watched a handful of the movies and I was just like, yeah, they're cool, but it's kind of just like the same plot over and over again. <laughs> I don't know. We They were on HBO or Apple. I think they were on HBO a while ago, all the movies. And my wife and I were like, yeah, let's just go through all of them. And we watched the first three and then we're just like, all right, we're kind of bored. We're done. <laughs> So I'm not a big like Harry Potter person, but this video game actually looks pretty incredible. It looks like right up my alley. So I'm going to be giving that. I actually pre-ordered that one. And that's a whole other conversation is freaking video game prices lately. Uh, dude, video games are $70 now. I mean, plus tax $75. Uh, Dude, I used to like cringe at spending $50 on a game. So I don't even know the longevity of me being able to fork out the money for new video games. Like I really, really, really wanted to play Dead Space, like the new remastered Dead Space that just came out. Like I'm watching all these videos, watching all these reviews, looking at uh gameplays and stuff and it looks great and i would love to play it i'm not spending 75 dollars on that game come on dude that's so expensive um and it makes business models like game pass just so much more appealing because let's be honest i pause and resume my game pass membership very periodically like there will be months that go by where i just like i cancel it and then something will come out that i really want to play like uh like i tried high on life i was like yeah i'll just get it for one month i'll pay ten dollars and i'll play it for i mean because honestly i don't play video games for more than a month most of the time i just play it and then on to the next one. But yeah, I I don't know about this $75 price tag. That's so much. Uh, so I'm probably going to be diving into older games. <laughs> like bangers from the past 5-10 years that are on sale or on Game Pass or marked down. Or But the thing about the... That's the hard part about the Series S is that you have to get everything digitally so you can't just get used games. That's the Yeah, that's tough cuz on my PS4 I wanted to play like I had never played Uncharted 4 or I had never played The Last of Us and I went to just GameStop or like a local game store and got them used for like 10 bucks, 5 bucks, something like that. Because at this point, they're just so old. But they're still great games, and I just never experienced them. So I just got to wait for all these games that are coming out right now to go on sale in like a year or two. Which is whatever. But uh, So I've been watching The Last of Us on HBO Max. Oh my goodness, this show is so good, and I'm so glad that it's so good. Uh, I played The Last of Us Part 2 first. So um, I actually, I kind of slept on The on the Last of Us Part 1, but I played Part 2 first, and then that game was so good that I was like, oh, okay, I have to go play Part 1. Um, so I kind of did it in reverse order, but I still, in, I mean, I still thoroughly enjoyed both games equally. Um in fact, I think I might actually like part two more. But, I mean, part one is still great, too. But this show, The Last of Us on HBO, the TV show, they're just knocking it out of the park. And I'm so glad that it's so good. I heard that it was the second biggest premiere in HBO history after House of Dragon, which Emily and I also started. Uh 
it's that's also really good but pretty pretty brutal uh but yeah i just i'm so happy that they're making a tv show out of the last of us and honestly it sounds like there's at least going to be three seasons if not more and i'm yeah i'm just really excited to see where that series goes um i guess staying on the topic of tv shows for a while um i wanted to talk about my i think yeah so this is my favorite tv show of all time and that tv show is frasier so i highly recommend everybody listening to this podcast everybody watching this on youtube or whatever you have like to understand me as a person to <laughs> to know my sense of humor you must watch frasier so i I couldn't even tell you how many times I've watched the entire series, which is 11 seasons. I couldn't tell you how many times I've watched it. Probably dozens of times. And I know that's whatever. It is what it is. But this Frasier is such a big part of like my upbringing my development it's such a timeless tv show the writing is absolutely impeccable it's one of the wittiest cleverest like just executed exceptionally shows of all time it's so good and it's so funny and it totally got overshadowed by Seinfeld and Friends. I don't like Friends. Friends is not for me. I I really like Seinfeld a lot. I'm a big Seinfeld, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Larry David fan. Uh, but if I could pick one show to watch for the rest of my life, without a doubt, it's, it's Frasier. I just like click with that show so much and... It's just so comforting. Like it really just brings me back to this like ultimate place of just like feel good, 20 minute bite-sized episodes, just like a good, you're just going to be happy <laughs> for 21 minutes, 22 minutes. And a lot of the, like I feel like a lot of the 90s shows a lot of them haven't really aged well. Uh, like a lot of them are like, oh, you can't really make that joke anymore. Ooh, that's a little off color, off taste. Uh, but with Frasier, it's literally like there's there's 11 seasons, each with like 24, 20 minute episodes. So there's hundreds of episodes. And I think maybe like one or two, there's like a couple bad jokes or like, there's this one character bulldog and he's like, he's supposed to be a very toxic character. Uh, but a lot of his like misogyny is kind of, uh, it, I mean, it is a timepiece, right? It's a product of its time. Uh, but overwhelmingly for the most part, it is a timeless TV show. Um, it's so well done. It's so hilarious. Uh, I could go on about Frasier for a long time, but it's one of my favorite TV shows. Uh, favorite TV show of all time. I love Frasier. Okay, I am done with the podcast. I have said everything I could ever say until next week comes along. Uh, so if you're on YouTube, if you could subscribe, that would be super awesome. If you are on Spotify or Apple, then if you could leave a review, that'd be cool. I'm trying to implement ads now on Spotify. Anchor allows you to do ad-free podcasts and then podcasts with ads for like however much you want to charge. So I was going to charge like 99 cents per month to get these podcasts without ads. Uh, it's still going to like, 
it's going to take a while before I actually like solidify and implement that in an effective way. But for right now, just there's probably no ads yet. I think you probably have to reach this like threshold of listenership in order to get ads. Uh, but I'll get there at some point. Uh, okay. It's been good. Thank you for listening. Y'all are great. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. And until next time, goodbye.